Do you want to know when you should pay your credit card bill to increase your credit score? In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how you should pay it and when you should do it. Above everything else, I'm going to show you the best strategy to boost your credit score. As a matter of fact, everything that I mentioned in this video has helped me get a credit score of 835 for several years now. Check this out. Let me show you my TransUnion credit score. This is my Discover FICO score from TransUnion. For those of you who have a Discover credit card, understand what I'm referring to. My FICO score is 845. I only have a 1% utilization ratio. Now let's scroll down so that you can see my FICO score history. As you can see here, it's been around 840 for more than a year now. Now let me also show you my Capital One FICO score. As you can see here, I have an 835 FICO score. I only use 1% of my available credit. And this is my credit score history, starting from January 2023. It's been hovering around 835. Now let me say this, I'm not showing you my credit score, which is almost perfect, to brag or to make you feel bad. I'm only showing you my credit score to motivate you and to inspire you so that you can see that it's possible to have a high credit score. You are watching the Financial Coffee channel? Let's get into this. Unlike the regular monthly bill, your credit card statement gives you the freedom to decide how much you want to pay on it. It also gives you several ways to pay it off. And the best way to pay off your credit card depends on your budget and your personal and financial goals. I completely understand that sometimes it can be confusing. But that's why I'm here today. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so let me show you a screenshot of my Capital One credit card statement. I will put down for you what each one of these actually mean. Let's start with the new balance. This is the amount due during the statement period or the billing cycle. Right next to it is the minimum payment due. It simply means that during the statement period, this is how much you have to pay before you get charged with late fees and interest. Depending on the credit card that you have, this can range between $25 to $35 per month. If you have a charge card like the American Express Platinum credit card, then you will just have to pay the balance in full every month. So moving on to the next box. This is the payment due date. It is the date that you must make the minimum payment by. Basically, as long as you make the minimum payment by this date, you will not be charged with any sort of late fees. But as a side note, for any billing cycle or statement period that you don't pay the balance in full, you will be charged with interest on that balance. And depending on your credit score and the credit card itself, this can range anywhere from 14% to 25%. So now, let's go a little bit further onto the credit card bill statement. Majority of the time in your credit card statement, you will be able to see what your credit limit is. So for instance, on this credit card, I have a limit of $6,100 and my available credit limit during the bidding cycle is $6,084. How this number is calculated? It is calculated by taking your credit limit and by subtracting your new balance. In my case, $6,100 minus $50.49. And also, on your credit card bill, you may see how many days are inside your bidding cycle. My Capital One credit card has a 30-day bidding cycle. Most credit cards have a bidding cycle that range anywhere from 28 days to 31 days. Now, when should you pay your credit card bring me up to the next point? As you just saw, there are so many different dates and that can be confusing. If you see October 15 as a due date, you might think that you have until October 15 to pay it. It is partially true. But if you really want to see a big boost on your credit score, it is not the date when you should pay. The due date is actually the very last date you have to make the payment on this account. Meaning that you need to pay the balance of this credit card by that date. This is not the date that the credit card company or the bank report the balance to the credit bureau. The statement date is the date that you should focus on. Basically, it is the date that the bank or the credit card company report the balance that is due on the credit card. And that has the biggest impact on your credit score. So if you want a big boost in your credit score, I want you to forget about the due date. I need you to focus on the statement date. But in most cases, they don't specifically mention it on your credit card statement. So how do you find your credit card statement date? You could call your bank and ask them. They will tell you. Usually, on your credit card statement, it is the second date that you find on the statement period. What do I mean by that? Take a look at my Capital One credit card statement. It is the second date on my statement period. On my credit card bill, it is September 20. It can be different on your credit card statement. But always remember that it is the last day of your billing cycle. So pay close attention to the second date of your statement period or the last date of your billing cycle. It's all the same because that is your settlement date. On that date, the credit card company or the bank report your credit card balance to the credit bureau, which in turn greatly impact your credit score. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you have a credit card with a limit of $10,000. Let's assume that you have a balance of $4,000. 
Now, let's say that your payment due date is on the 29th and the statement date is on the 17th. Your $4,000 balance will be reported to the credit bureau on the 17th. They will also report a 40% utilization ratio. Why 40%? Well, $4,000, which is your balance, divided by $10,000, which is your available credit, is equal to 40%. So on the 17th, which is your statement date, they will also report a 40% utilization ratio. That will negatively impact your credit score. Why? The higher your credit utilization ratio is, the higher the risk you are seen to lenders. Also, people with a high credit score typically report a less than 10% utilization ratio on a credit card. Now, do you remember when I show you my 885 credit score? I also show you, if you remember, that I have a 1% utilization ratio. Here is another secret. People with high credit score pay a big portion of the balance back by the statement date. Why? Because the credit card company or the bank will report a lower credit utilization ratio which in turn will boost your credit score. Let's talk about another strategy to pay off your credit card, which is auto payment. Each person has a different billing cycle. So, each situation would be completely different. But if you want a simple approach, rather than calculating your credit utilization and making your payment early, but just leaving a little bit on your credit card just to boost your credit score, I fully understand. What I recommend here is to turn on your auto payment feature on your credit card. Every single credit card company has this feature. They normally have two options. Make the minimum payment every time your balance is due or pay your balance in full whenever the new balance is due. I would highly recommend that you always have an auto payment of around five to six days before your balance is due. And have it set to auto payment for the new balance. That way, you will never miss a late payment, which will save you from the late fees and from paying interest. Now, going back to our strategy, let's say that you want to make a big purchase on your credit card, like a flat screen TV. I would highly suggest making some early payment on your credit card. So by the time you get your credit card statement, you have a much lower balance. And once this information is reported to the credit bureau, it will show that you are actually using this credit card. But you don't have a high credit utilization. So if you charge $5,000 on a credit card that has a $10,000 credit limit, pay off $3,000 right away. Whenever your next statement comes into the mail, it will only show that you have a new balance of $2,000. That way, your information will get reported to the credit bureau and in turn, we greatly boost your credit score. This will make it look like you are actually using the credit card that is available to you. And when you pay the balance in full, it's a win-win situation for you. That's a technique that I have been using for years. And that's why I have an 835 credit score. Always pay a big portion of your balance by the statement date. If you have a $4,000 balance, pay back maybe $3,000 or more by the statement date. That way, your credit card company will report a less than 10% utilization ratio. It will look great to them because 40% make you look risky and will have a negative impact on your credit score and credit report. So if you only want to remember one thing from this entire video, remember this. As soon as you get your credit card statement, find out what is your statement date. The statement date is the second date of your statement period. It is also the last day of your billing cycle. If you cannot find that date, just call your bank and ask them. Once you know the statement date, make a goal of paying a portion of your balance so that your credit utilization ratio stays under 10%. But don't forget to still make at least a minimum payment by the due date. If you don't, they will report you as being late on your payment. You wouldn't have to pay interest and late fees. Now, let me tell you one thing about this myth that's going on, saying that you should always have a small balance on your credit card. Just to show the credit bureau that you are actually using your credit card. This is pure baloney. Just pay your balance in full so you don't get charged interest. Don't be late on your payment and pay your balance in full every single month before the statement due date. It's that simple. Trust me, if you do this for every single credit card bill that you have for the rest of your life, you will never have a problem with the credit card and you will have a great credit score. Now, if you want to know how your bank and your credit card company align to you, click on the video that appears on the screen right now. That is all for today. Thank you for watching the Financial Coffee Channel and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.